Now you go to the next sheet, recommended change in uh, TEAK number three on page three. You can see the change is to replace imperialism with expansionism. It would strike the word propaganda and replace it with the words including Wilson's Committee on Public Education. Uh, would you like to speak to those changes? Miss Hardy. Guys, you're rewriting history now. Don McLeroy is a chipper suburban dentist, a former college cheerleader, and a self-described Christian fundamentalist whose views on history, politics, and science may well impact what your child learns in school. He's part of a powerful block of Christian conservatives who critics say are imposing their religious and political views on what public school students learn on subjects ranging from history to evolution. I disagree with these experts. Somebody's got to stand up to experts. This is not just some Texas sideshow. Because the state of Texas buys so many textbooks, publishers often tailor the materials that go out all over the country to the standards that McElroy and his colleagues have set. The first time. Right now, the board is working on the social studies guidelines, and here are some examples of things the conservative bloc has pushed through. They've required that textbooks mention pillars of the conservative movement like the Moral Majority, the National Rifle Association, and the Contract with America. God bless America. With no liberal counterbalance. They've insisted that the words of Jefferson Davis, president of the Confederacy during the Civil War, be considered alongside those of Abraham Lincoln. And they have inserted language suggesting that the actions of the infamous anti-communist Senator Joseph McCarthy were justified. Another hot area, the conservative bloc's current push to emphasize the Christian faith of America's founding fathers. What do you say to people who say that you are, in essence, imposing your political and religious views on school. The, I was elected. I told people what I believed in and what I, motivated me. And so I, my goal as an elected official is, to, you know, is to speak up and to do that. On 23B, I would like to delete hip hop and insert country music. I would like to amend uh, 24C to delete of various racial, ethnic, gender, and religious groups. Is there a second? The, second. The, the, to answer, in the actual student expectation, it says various groups, from various groups. So various groups are mentioned. But, so this is unnecessary and redundant. Uh, Mrs. Knight. It is not necessary. It is not redundant, not redundant. for me because the racial and ethnic groups and the gender groups that you're trying to strike out overcame great obstacles to make contribution to American culture, American society, American civilization, American whatever you want to call it. So to me you're sanitizing the difficulties that these groups who are people had to overcome in order to make a contribution to society. So you, we talk about rewriting history. This board is rewriting history as far as I'm concerned in some areas because you are the want to sanitize anything that may have <coughs> reflected or may reflect negatively on our country and there are things that were done in this country that were negative. Mrs. Berlanga, did you have your hand up? Well, I uh, I totally agree with uh, Miss Knight, and um, quite frankly, this is horrifying. If you remove that, there are so many contributions. Um, I can just think right off the top of my head of the contributions of one ethnic group, which were the Mexican Americans, who uh, we'll be able to read about. I think in our history, if we don't change those. A, a minor point here, are the rumors of the Texas Board of Education true? Yes. I don't even have to wonder what the rumors are. It, yeah. If, I've, I've if seen the rumors are negative, news. yeah. Yeah, I've heard Thomas Jefferson being thrown out. They're, they're rewriting. 
what they want to do is they want to uh, they want children to be taught that this was uh, that the United States was some sort of religious oasis they want to throw out completely the point of this country uh, the United States may have been colonized by people who were re fleeing religious persecution in other countries but when they got here they persecuted each other in similar fashion I mean with early Protestants and Quakers and Puritans were all at war with each other lopping off each other's ears torturing each other in the streets and then what happened when the United States government began to be erected was they they started looking at how in France in uh, recent history at that time you had Catholics hunting Protestants en masse by orders of the government and in England again you had Protestants hunting Catholics for the same reason it was an order a law of the land and so when they set up the United States it was supposed to be the world's first secular government it was supposed to preserve freedom of religion and now many Christians will tell me that freedom of religion means freedom of Christian religion but no it doesn't because I can point out that Mormons are a Christian religion they are the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and in the United States after the foundation of our government we had a law passed I don't remember if it was Illinois or if it was in Missouri but it had federal marshals hunting down whole families of Mormons and shooting them in the streets this is what the founding fathers expected would be happening if you didn't prevent the government from being intertwined with religion freedom of religion by necessity demands freedom from religion it means putting the reins on religion and it means that the government cannot promote or endorse any one religion over any other and that's one of the things that the Board of Education wants to specifically exclude from the lesson plan they don't want children to know that the government is prohibited from promoting Christianity over Islam or Hinduism or anything else. There's a member of the school board whose name escapes me at the moment who explicitly said just just recently that uh, the idea of church-state separation uh, is fictional and he's offered to donate a thousand dollars to the charity of your choice if you can find it in the Constitution and this is the sort of we talked about this a little bit yesterday so if you haven't listened to nonprofits you can go back I won't reiterate all of it it's a sort of word games that go on and, and as Russell pointed out uh, the word Trinity doesn't exist in the New Testament either it, it's it's a concept that has grown out of what was explicitly stated uh, in the First Amendment that the government shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or preventing the free exercise thereof well those words don't say church-state separation, but that's what they mean. And how do we know that that's what they mean? Because Thomas Jefferson, another person we're not allowed to discuss anymore, it would seem, clarified that point. He's the one that wrote that there should be a wall of separation between church and state. He, he specified this is exactly what he meant by that passage, so there, there can be no ambiguity here. And, he, and he's not alone. The other, there are quotes from the other founding fathers. And Madison said that the only uh, valid, uh, uh, I'm going to get the quote wrong, but the only valid uh, interaction government should have with religion is in settling debutes, disputes of a legal nature between religions. Uh, it's, it, you know, even if Thomas Jefferson had never written uh, that quote about church day separation, this is the practical application of what the First Amendment must mean. It has to mean that because anything else renders it meaningless and moot. Yeah, I hope uh, something can, I don't know what can be done, the ACLU with the ACA, uh, but hopefully something can be competed against this. I'd, I would like to see a revision of this plan wherein we, we take the least credible people possible and put them in, in these positions of power and then have their decisions irrevocable for a decade. That doesn't make any sense, especially when it indirectly affects the rest of the country because whatever decision some willfully ignorant dentist in Texas makes then establishes what the uh, educational criteria for children in Maine or Vermont or Washington have to endure. Surprising things can happen even when you didn't expect it. Now, the uh, the right-wing political fundamentalist movement already knows that they can't compete against science. And they've already lost every battle in their imagined culture war they insist on fighting over all our collective kids. But since their uh, method of mental conditioning requires 
indoctrination prior to education, and since most of the country tends to follow Texas' example when it comes to the purchase of textbooks, this has allowed them to take advantage of a dysfunctional system. By investing tens of thousands of dollars on each of the seats they've so far acquired on the Board of Education, they managed to position a panel of unqualified minions, further uh, promoted by a gubernatorial appointment, to vote in a political bloc like the pawns that they are. But now that these stooges have become such an obvious embarrassment on an international scale, it may be possible to fix this yet. Provided we apply enough pressure to our representatives within the state, we may be able to reverse these amendments before they're ratified in May. And whether you're in the state or not, I would encourage you to sign the petition provided by the Texas Freedom Network, links in the sidebar, to stop politicizing our classrooms and just educate our students to prepare them to be competitive and independent in the 21st century and not just brace for some medieval mindset. Thank you.